Next thing to do is to set the values for these components. Uh, you'll see the resistors come in by default as 1K, the capacitors as 1 nanofarad, and the voltages as just a 5 volt DC source. That's what that 5 means there, just constant 5 volts. And the transistor has come in as a 2N222, which is a standard NPN transistor, but not the one that we're using in the labs. To change the values of the resistor, we can just double click on the resistor. That brings up this choose component value window. And you'll note it that Symmetrics is quite friendly. It knows what the E6, E12 and E24 series of values are. And you can just step up through the values in the E12 series. If you want to input any other value, for example, supposing you wanted um, a 3K, you could either just type it in here, that 3K, that's what I want or type 3 in base and select the decade 1K, that gives you the 3K. 3K is a pretty silly value to have as your base resistor. You're more likely to use something like 1.5 meg. So let's pick that one for now. OK. Similarly, this resistor here on the collector, you can set to any value you want. Um, the load resistor here, the load we'll be sort of using in the lab is a oscilloscope probe. So th probably it's going to be around 10 meg if you're using a times 10 probe. And the capacitors you can set in the same way, um, E6, E12 and E24. There's also this initial conditions box. Don't worry about that for now, we won't be using that in these labs. That's for a transient analysis. But you might want, for example, a 100 nanofarad there. The voltage sources here, a little bit more complicated. This one is just a 15 volt voltage source. You'll see that 5, 12, and 15 are the most common voltage sources to use, so they are provided as buttons here in a friendly and helpful way. You can just hit 15. Um, note that enable DC is ticked, but enable AC is not. And none of the others are enabled either. That means that this is going to produce a constant DC voltage. That's all. But it's now 15 volts. This one, however, the input here, we don't want that to be a constant DC voltage. We want that to be an AC voltage because we're going to be using that to measure the frequency response of our circuit. So on this one, if I double click this, I'm going to disable the DC, but enable the AC. If I click on the AC, you'll see I can input a magnitude and a phase, but the default magnitude one and phase zero are absolutely fine. It doesn't mean one volt, it just means one unit. It uses it to calculate gains later on. That's okay. Right, assuming you've put in some more sensible values for RC, we're just about done, except for the transistor. We're not using a QN2222. Double click on that, and we get up this huge great window here, with all sorts of transistor devices in it. Um, doesn't quite fit in the screen capture. There, hang on. Right. If I search through all of these, uh, I will eventually find the BC182 that we're using in the labs. Select that and hit OK. And the model goes to BC182.